fearless, confident, empowered. These are just some of the feelings your people will have after hearing Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz share their life-changing message. Authors and creators of Go For No, the groundbreaking strategy that is literally reprogramming the way people think about failure, rejection, and achieving success. Richard and Andrea's Go For No philosophy is being embraced by a wide variety of businesses and industries. They were recently the featured sales article in Success Magazine, and the excitement and enthusiasm for the Go For No message is growing larger every day. Let's join Richard and Andrea now as they share their ideas with another thrilled audience. And here's what really the first job I took was in sales, of course, but just kind of within retail sales. Because I thought in retail things would be different. See, in the car business, I would call on people. In retail, I thought, oh, you see, they'll be coming in to see me. So all of my fear and all of my apprehension will go away. The reality was I had been in a job for about two months. I was selling suits for a major retailer, and I was still failing. In fact, my sales were so abysmal, I was pretty sure that they were going to fire me. And then I heard that a gentleman by the name of Harold, the district manager, was coming to visit the store. And I thought, if I could impress Harold enough when he comes and visits, maybe they'll give me a chance to improve my sales. Well, Harold came in, we had donuts and coffee, the store opened up at 10 o'clock in the morning, and because I was the first person in that morning, I had what they call the first up. I got to take care of the first customer. And in walked this very well-dressed gentleman. I walked up to him and said, hi, how can I help you? And the man said, I need to buy an entire wardrobe of clothing. And I was like, yes, this is it. Here is my moment. I am going to tell Harold what an amazing salesperson I can be. And for the next half hour, I took care of this gentleman. He bought a suit, he bought a sport coat, he bought a few pairs of slacks, he bought shirts, ties, shoes, socks, belts, underwear, a collar pin, pocket square. I mean, it was the entire wardrobe. It was an $1,100 set. Now, for the time period 1980, and for the price point of our merchandise, it was a really good sale. I took the customer to the register, rang it up, walked him out of the store, came back in, and now I'm waiting for Harold to congratulate me on this spectacular sale. And Harold doesn't say anything. So I started moving towards Harold. See if I could get in his line of sight. And eventually we're standing side by side next to the cash register, and he finally threw me a phone. He said, hey, that was my sale, kid. And I said, yeah, man, did you see that? $100, isn't that a good one? He said, yeah, that was a nice sale. And then there was this moment of silence, and then Harold asked the question. He said, Richard, would you mind if I asked you a question? I said, sure, what? He said, out of curiosity, he said, what did that customer say no to? And I have to tell you, I got a little bit ticked at first because I'm trying to impress him. And I'm like, what do you mean what did he say no to? And that guy bought a suit, he bought a sport coat, he bought a slack. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, I already know what he said yes to. Because you just take the sales check, you look at everything you bought, those are all of the yeses. He said, what I'm asking you is, what did he say no to? And I stopped and I reviewed the sale in my mind from the minute that the customer came in until I walked him out of the store. And I realized that that man had not said no to anything. Every single thing I laid in front of him, he purchased. I said, Harold, the customer didn't say no to anything. And then Harold asked me the other really amazing question. He asked, then how did you know he was done? Yeah. Good question. Well, I'll tell you how he knew he was done. You see, I had never spent over $1,000 on clothing on myself in my life. <laughs> to me, $1,000 on clothing on a single trip into a store? That was outrageous. That was a tremendous amount of money. And when you hit my mental spending limit, you were done. <laughs> Richard, apparently you're a slow learner. He said, I don't want you to tolerate hearing the word no. I don't want you to fight through failure rejection. He said, I want you to embrace it. I want you to seek it. I want you to like it. He said, in fact, I want you to love hearing the word no. Now, it had not only crossed my mind that I was supposed to be hearing no more often, it had never crossed my mind that I was supposed to love it. It just never crossed my mind. 
But Harold was teaching me something that most people don't realize, and that if you hate rejection, and you hate failure, and you hate hearing the word no, then you are going to avoid it. And the avoidance of those things will keep you from everything else it is that you want in your life. You have to reach a point where you embrace it. Not I love the concept of going for a no goal versus going for a yes goal because you do tend to stop after you hit your yes and it does it doesn't it, it kind of hinders you from being successful so I like that that's what I'm gonna